The giant tunnel boring machine, which has been carving out the most complex part of the HS2 rail project, has broken through in Birmingham. The 1,600-ton machine, called Mary Ann, has successfully tunnelled three and a half miles, including underneath the M6 motorway and the River Tame. Our Midlands correspondent, Phil Mackey, joins us live from Birmingham this lunchtime. And, Phil, you were there to watch the breakthrough. Yes, Nina. So after 652 days and nights, the tunneling machine, Mary Ann, you can see it there, poking through the wall, burst through. So it's completed that 5.8 kilometre journey into the city of Birmingham. There's not much left of the route before it joins up with Curzon Street Station, which will be the ultimate destination when those high speed rate trains start rolling in from London to Birmingham, maybe in six or seven years time people from all over the world working on it, hence the flag. So those are the flags of the nations and some of the people who were working on it and gathered around this morning just after seven o'clock were hundreds of those staff who come to see the breakthrough. The moment they'd been waiting for. The first of twin tunnelling machines broke through the Bromford Tunnel in Washwood Heath in Birmingham just after seven o'clock this morning. It's the longest and deepest tunnel at this end of the 140-mile route. Breaking through the concrete wall was Mary Ann, named after the Victorian author whose pen name was George Eliot. It's been a massive operation, the most complex tunnel of the whole HS2 project, according to its engineers. Well, it's taken 22 months and it's travelled underground for nearly six kilometres. But finally, Mary Ann has broken through the first of the two tunnels that will bring HS2 into Birmingham. We went under the M6, which of course is a massive asset going into Birmingham. We went under the overhead line of National Grid powering Birmingham. We also went under the River Tame four times, with as, as low as five metre cover, which is very shallow cover. So we have to... This is, of course, a feat of engineering in itself. This is what it looks like at the other end, on the outskirts of Birmingham, nearly six kilometres away. On the right, you can see the other tunnelling machine, Elizabeth, named after the Birmingham-based Victorian philanthropist Elizabeth Cadbury. It won't break through into the city until the autumn. Hundreds of people have worked on this part of the project from all over the world, but in Mary Ann today were two Brummies who began as apprentices when the tunnelling started. Oh, great. I feel like we've actually played a big part in something that's going to help everyone that lives locally and nationally. You do miss the daylight. It's, you know, it feels like a long day down there some days when you're just working away in the heat as well. But it's all worth it in the end. It's probably going to be at least another six years before any passengers emerge on their final leg of the HS2 route into the city, a few miles short of its centre. Phil Mackey, BBC News, Birmingham.